I am the Edison phonograph. The more you become acquainted with me, the better you will like me. Ask the dealer. Wait a minute. Here's the answer to all those problems. The totally new, totally different Crosley. So see the sensational new Crosley this week at your Crosley dealers. And remember, Crosley. Hey guys, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, super excited today. We are going to be unboxing and reviewing the Crosley C100 two-speed stereo turntable. All right, guys, this is Crosley's entry-level high-end turntable. So if you want to get serious um, about uh, vinyl quality, sound quality, durability, uh, this is a good turntable uh, to go to. Uh, priced amazingly low. Uh, MSRP on this thing is, you know, about $200, but you can get it for a lot less on Amazon. This turntable has um, a built-in phono preamp. If you don't have a separate preamp, um, you can use the built-in one. The reason why that's important is this uh, turntable features an Audio-Technica uh, cartridge and stylus that is a magnetic cartridge. So unlike a lot of the other entry-level equipment where they use a ceramic cartridge, uh, this uses magnetic. Magnetic produces less voltage than a than a ceramic cartridge and therefore needs more amplification for you to hear it. Um, the ceramic ones are a bit more abrasive but they do output a higher amount of voltage therefore you don't need the preamp. Now I don't know if it'll show up very well but something you'll see on all of these Crosley uh, boxes and yeah it's not showing up but very faintly and actually it's even upside down very faintly on the top there is written the history of Crosley which is really really cool something neat to check out uh, if and when you buy a uh, Crosley uh, piece of equipment. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and unbox it to begin with, and uh, we'll get right into it and see what we got here. Super excited. This will be a lot of fun. Open up. Big box. Not much room, so I apologize, but I don't have a whole lot of space to do this. Everything is very well packaged, and as I always say, that's a very important thing. Because if you've got something worth protecting, you've got something worth having. On top here, we have the uh, Crosley slip mat. So there that is. We'll go ahead and uh, set that aside for right now. And everything is bracketed with this uh, styrofoam end pieces here, which are taped. Very tight packaging. Okay, there, there's a platter. Metal, as you can hear. Okay, let's set that aside. Alrighty. So now let's set it back down. And we'll ease off styrofoam on the end here. Still is taped somewhere. That's oh, just tight. What on earth am I doing wrong? Maybe it's just tight. Oh, you know what? I think... Oh, okay. It's under the lid. How the heck do you get it off? The whole thing is... Okay. Okay, so the uh, dust cover is packed in completely separate there, so you can pull that off and set it aside. And then gently take off the uh, tire foam on the end there. You guys ever notice when you uh, unpack something and you try to put the uh, uh, styrofoam packing material back in the box, how it never fits, even without the product? Okay. Notice there, accessory. Don't throw it away because there's something worth keeping in there. And very much there is. So let's go ahead and see what is here. Man, this is packed in tight. This is... All right, tone arm counterweight. 
45 spacer, it looks like. All right, and there it is, the cartridge head shell stylus assembly, Audio-Technica. It is replaceable, so uh, if you need to replace it down the road, you can. Uh, but there that is. Now we can discard this piece. On top here we have our instructions and something else in there as well. So it's looks like an RCA cable. Yep, so we got an RCA cable in there and our warranty card and instruction booklet, uh, which will show you how to do everything from setting it up and operation as well. So we'll set that aside and refer to it as needed. In the meantime, we'll continue to unpack uh, the turntable. And I will have to say this, guys, I am extremely impressed so far. I mean, the I have never seen a turntable that has been packed like this one. Absolutely tight, high quality packing materials. And yes, it does make a difference because if you have something worth packing safely and investing as a manufacturer in those packing materials it means you care about your product and, you, and it matters that you uh, it means that they care that it gets to you in good condition okay alrighty so we're going to slide the bag off of this thing slides off the front we have it turned around to the back right now alright As you can tell, there's some setup work that needs to be done here. Um, obviously the platter is not in place. Um, the tone arm is packed and needs to have the uh, head installed. And um, it looks like, looks like the belt may need to be installed as well. So, I think we should follow the instructions. First I'm gonna turn this around so we can Look at it from the right angle there. Just beautiful. Big, heavy, gorgeous. I mean, an absolutely gorgeous. Now, let me point it out. This is a C100. Um, the C200 uh, is the same version of this, but it also is direct drive versus belt drive. So the motor is actually turning the spindle, or excuse me, turning the platter directly versus this belt assembly. So this is the motor on this one, and the belt goes around. To turn it. Why would you want direct drive? It's higher torque, gets up to speed faster. Um, people like the belt driven systems because of the buffer between the motor and the um, turntable itself with the uh, belt. It gives you a little bit more isolation from vibration and rumble and therefore a theoretically quieter ride um, for, the, um, for the record. Okay, so... What do we need to do to set this bad boy up? Remove the turntable from the box packaging. Put on a 45 RPM adapter into the hole. Okay. So, here's our 45 adapter. Again, you can upgrade these if you want a fancy metal one, but these do the job perfectly. And as always, upper left-hand corner. Now, what's kind of neat about the Crosleys is they put a little divot in the back of this opening. So to get it out, you can just push down on the back, and then it pops out. I know, something small and simple, but it's kind of a cool little feature there. So anyway, that's where that guy lives. Um, okay, now we need to set the turntable platter onto the center spindle. This is the platter. It is heavy. It is metal. These are things that are done on purpose so that it will not warp and wobble. Look at that. Metal high quality and there is the belt so you see the belt it's pre-installed around the center of the bottom of the platter so we will need to attach the belt uh, to the motor and I'll show you how to do that in a minute and there is the top so again there's no slip mat on the top um, that is still metal and it came with a slip mat so we'll put the slip mat on and here um, that's not just a design feature I'll show you how to use this later but this allows you to use the strobe which is right here um, to gauge the speed of the turntable and then using the pitch adjustment 
um, correct it if it's a little slower, a little fast, or whatnot. Plus, some records are recorded a little slower, a little fast. So when you really get into things, sometimes you'll want to uh, make those adjustments. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the platter on to the spindle. I'm putting the opening right there by the motor because, uh, as you can see, this is taped right here. And I think it's attached to the belt. So the idea, I think, is we'll pull it off and then stretch the belt over, over that guy there. So put this to the side. Looking gorgeous. Super high quality. I could tell just by feeling it. Okay. Set the turntable platter onto the center spindle. Once the turntable platter is in place, rotate the platter so the large window is at the top right, which we already did. Carefully grab the drive belt already attached to the underside of the turntable platter and place it around the pulley on the drive motor. Okay, so what we're going to do is they've actually put a little piece of ribbon here. And it attaches, oh, this is awesome. It attaches around the belt, so all we have to do, well, careful there, is pull up on the ribbon and gently place that belt behind the spindle there. And that's it. I can tell you that this is, okay, there we go. It was backwards, so I had to adjust it there. Okay. Okay, guys, the next step is we're going to put the slip mat on. Um, this slip mat is felt and uh, super padded and designed to give traction to the record as it spins and also um, to protect it and the uh, platter as well. Unlike the T300, which has a rubber slip mat, this one's felt. So very nice and a little bit different there. Okay, now we are going to insert the head shell into the front end of the tone arm. So I'm gonna get a better angle for this piece of it. Okay guys, so now we are going to install the head shell. So it's wrapped separately as we saw. You wanna be very careful as you open this. The stylus is protected, but you got exposed wiring here. Um, you wanna be very careful. This is heavy and this is high quality. Um, sometimes when you buy a higher end turntable, you will have to actually align this right here with those two screws, this one is pre-aligned, so that's good. Um, and then we'll keep that, the uh, stylus uh, protector on there. That's the Audio-Technica logo there. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and put this on. Okay, there's a little tab on the top there, so you just insert that loosely. Don't push too far in. And then you're going to screw this until it's tight, and you'll feel it. doesn't doesn't move much. And then you have it installed there, so we're good to go to the next step. Okay, so this is the biggest adjustment, adjusting the counterbalance and the tone arm assembly. So we're going to slide the counterweight onto the tone arm. This is the counterweight. Um, this allows you to adjust how many grams of pressure uh, the stylus will be placing on your record. I'm going to slide it on just like this. The number's facing forward. Okay, now we can take off the stylus protector. We'll slide that off. Got to be very careful not to touch the stylus. Okay, we're going to take off this twist tie here, just like that. So as you can see, uh, we've got the cueing lever right there, but our tone arm still isn't properly balanced. So what we're going to need to do is raise and lower the tone arm to kind of get an idea of how it's balanced. As you can see, it's barely going down, which means the weight is very, very low on that stylus right now. Um, once we lower it into the lowest position, we want to rotate the counterweight towards the front of the turntable until the tone arm is balanced and it floats freely. So see how it's still going down? We need it to kind of balance in position. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this back until it floats. That's too far back. That's too far forward. Very Tiny adjustment, a little bit forward. Okay, we are now in a floating position. Now that it's balanced, what we're gonna need to do is calibrate this dial. So you see this black dial on the front? We need to rotate it, just the black part, so that the zero is lined up with that white line. That tells us 
that zero means completely balanced and floating, which it is. So let's make sure we're still balanced here. Okay, maybe we need to maybe we need to back off a little bit there. Okay, and then again, make sure that that zero is lined up indicating that it is truly balanced. Now that we have it set to zero and calibrated, we need to actually set the uh, pressure that we want. This is the downforce pressure that the stylus will be putting on the actual record itself. So for that, what we really want is somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a half to three and a half grams. Um, we don't want to go over five. Five is still completely safe. Uh, as you know, a lot of the other turntables track at five. Won't damage anything. But given the option, uh, we probably want to dial that in a little bit. So grabbing, gently, grabbing the uh, counterbalance, turning the front black part and the, and the silver part together, we're going to set a tracking force by rotating this. So we're going to set it until we get to about, I want to set it to three. And that's the recommended. Okay, so now this tone arm is tracking at three grams. Okay, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is adjust the anti-skate. Now this knob adjusts the anti-skate. That keeps it from skipping left and right um, in the groove. So we're going to adjust this to three. So that should match uh, the same value that you have in terms of a uh, uh, down pressure on the counterweight there. So we're tracking at three grams and our anti-skate is set to three as well. Okay, so now we're gonna put the uh, dust cover on the top. And let me say this, this thing actually has little hand holds on the bottom, so you can grab it and move it like that. It's just really neat. I think it's a cool little feature there. So the dust cover is the last thing we really have to unwrap, so we're just gonna take this off. Ooh, it's a beautiful blue tinted plastic. Sometimes they're like a smoked color. This one's like blue. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, so we're gonna install that. Recommended to keep this uh, dust cover in place at all times because as dust accumulates, uh, you do not want to be dealing with that. Okay, so we're gonna pull these tabs back and we are going to simply slide on the cover. Easy as that. So it is removable. Although, again, not recommended that you would do that. And now we've got our dust cover installed. And it hinges down to protect your investment. And it is beautiful. It's, a, like I said, a blue tint to it. So, yeah, super cool. The logo on top there. And our turntable is now assembled. Okay. So, making sure that your tone arm is locked. Please don't forget to do that we can take a look underneath here. So the bottom of this is all ABS, high impact material. Um, these uh, feet are a soft rubber hinge inside there. These are an ABS foot with a rubber uh, lining, but it's uh, there's a loose hinge to it, as you can see. So that'll give it some sound isolation characteristics, properties when it comes to uh, any sort of sound that may be happening. If you have your speakers on the same surface as the turntable, which, by the way, quick pro tip for you, if you can, put your speakers on a different surface than your turntable is. Uh, however, um, as long as you're not cranking, you know, way too much juice through them, you should be fine. Okay, let's go ahead and hook up some speakers and we'll give it a test drive. All right, guys, there's the phono slash line level adjuster switch on the back of the unit. So if you are using an external preamp, have it selected at phono like it is now. So that'll be putting out a lower voltage and your preamp will adjust it up. It does have a built-in preamp, so if you don't have a preamp or you're not using one, set it to line. Okay, we're gonna adjust it to line. Okay, over here is our left and right. We'll be connecting our RCA cable to that and connecting that cable to the speakers. Okay guys, it's time to play a record now. Uh, connect some speakers to it. In this case, I'm using the Crosley S100 speakers. Uh, which will work wonderfully. Go ahead and raise the dust cover. Uh, to turn the unit on, uh, the top of this rotates to the right and also 
not only powers up the unit, but also turns on the strobe light, uh, which I'll show you in a minute how that works. Um, so the next step is we're gonna take a record and we are going to place it on the platter. In this case, we're gonna be using Lady Gaga's The Fame, and I am going to be only playing a small amount of that music for copyright reasons, uh, but it'll give you some sense of it. And then I will obviously review uh, the quality of the turntable and the sound as I hear it. Okay, so gently holding the record by the sides, place it on the record player, find the spindle, rest it onto the slip mat. The record player is now on. We are going to now uh, make sure that the pitch adjust is at zero. That is the middle. There's a little, you can feel that when it gets there, it rests. It comes to a little bit of a rest. So that is the baseline. If we need to adjust the speed up or down, AKA the pitch up and down, we will use that pitch adjustment. Uh, but that'll come later uh, and I'll show you how to, uh, to look at the strobing uh, to check the speed. But for right now, we're gonna make sure that the uh, lock is open. We're gonna use the cueing lever to move the stylus and tone arm assembly up. And then we're gonna rotate it over the beginning of the record. Now we are going to select the speed, we're on 33, and we're gonna press the start button, which will start the turntable moving, and then making sure that the stylus is in the right position, we're going to drop the tone arm, and our music will begin playing. Now we're gonna make sure our speaker's volume is set appropriately. Okay guys, the sound is phenomenal. It sounds absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. And if you detect a little bit of a wobble there, my Lady Gaga record has a little bit of a warp. It's not the turntable itself. I want to show you guys how to use the strobe uh, to properly set your uh, turntable speed. So, uh, remember those dots along the side of the platter? Um, they allow us to check um, the appropriate speed of the uh, turntable uh, to make sure it's set exactly to be able to dial it in. Okay guys, do you see that dot right there? Not the big one on the lower level, but that one right there. That's the one we're looking at for this record. When you're using a uh, 45, you're gonna look at a different level, but for a 33, that's where you look right there. And you'll be able to tell which one is which simply by the one that's almost close. So that is a factory default speed uh, that this record player is set to. But using the um, pitch adjustment, we can adjust it as needed. So if you looked at that uh, light and it was moving either left or right, you would know that the turntable wasn't spinning in the appropriate, uh, at the appropriate speed. So moving the slider up, just to show you what happens, you're gonna see that light start to kind of rotate to the right. That means that the pitch is too low, it's spinning too slowly. So you would adjust the slider until you got it to stop. And there, see how the light stopped? That means that it is set at the appropriate speed. And conversely, if the light was going to the left like this, that means that it's going a little too fast and that you would need to adjust the pitch slider up and you would therefore get a slower speed and dial it right in. So this one is set just perfectly because it is in the zero position to get that speed. So there you go. It's as easy as that and it's something that you can really use to make sure your records are dialed in. Some records um, are recorded at slightly off speed so if you know that a record you have is slightly off you can use this as a tool to dial the record player in at the appropriate speed. Okay, so here's the slider. Going up makes it slower, and going down makes it higher. And then right in the middle there's a catch if you want to be at zero. Here's a speed selector right here if you want to adjust between 45 or 33. So in closing, this record player sounds phenomenal. The parts are high quality, they're heavy, they're durable, they're substantial. You get a very high quality Audio Technica head shell assembly and stylus on this. It's replaceable, so you can uh, use it with comfort, and knowing that uh, you can replace it down the road if you need to. You've got the uh, strobe light control uh, for perfect pitch and perfect speed. 
you've got push button start and stop, you've got speed selector switch, um, and then a variety of outputs, both amplified and non-amplified. And it's just a great, great turntable. Sounds wonderful. I really look forward to using this. This is going to be our premier turntable on the show going forward, you guys. We're going to feature it a lot. Uh, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to see more of it. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you would uh, take the time to like and comment, and most importantly, subscribe so you don't miss anything else in the future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you next time.